Hello, my dear friends. Today, we will begin our review of the diary of German Oberlieutenant Martin Steglitz. During his warpath in Russia, he made it to Demyansk. Here, German troops were surrounded, and he had to fight hard defensive battles. These memoirs are very comprehensive and interesting, because this German officer describes in great detail the facts of what he experienced on the Eastern Front. And now, let's begin. June 20th, 1941. Already before noon, the regiment commander, Lt. Col. Kegler, gave all the officers a truly breaking and sensational order. Together we can cope. We will face hard days and hours, but we must go on like everywhere else. Trim our sails to the wind. Keep our ears open and move forward. We have faith in God and confidence that we are superior, first of all, inside. June 21st. Last night, I instructed platoon commanders on the border. I was fed up with crawling on all fours and on the ground. We cleared up the whole thing. I returned only at 1 a.m. We had a bottle of champagne with the platoon commanders. Before lunch, there were training with the company in case of any special orders to conduct the battle. At noon, the orders were given to platoon commanders and all the junior officers. Everything is ready, considering all the details. I just read the Fuhrer's order. I'm going to recite it to the company. Tomorrow morning, we're moving out from Finland to the Black Sea. The 5th Company is on the division's main attack line. Cheer up, keep our eyes open, trim our sails to the wind, our ears to the ground, and we can do it all. After all, everything is prepared perfectly. Nobody at home has any idea about any of this. When waking up in the morning, they will find out about everything. I will already be hours in battle on the Russian ground. June 22nd. It's now about 10 p.m. in the evening. After a 27-kilometer advance, and that's only based on the readings of the compass, the company is being entrenched to my right and left. The fierce battle with a treacherous and cunning enemy is behind. We were shelled from the front, from the flank, and from the rear. Three non-commissioned officers and three soldiers were wounded. Two non-commissioned officers were seriously wounded, a blind wound in a lung and a forearm totally shattered by shrapnel. For the bravery in the face of the enemy, I suggested to promote non-commissioned officer Peters to the rank of Feldwebel. At once, he was given a promotion and informed while lying on a stretcher. The attack began at 3.05 a.m. this morning. We are surprised to see that none of the Russian positions were even completely occupied by troops. We haven't seen a single Russian plane. We caught them by surprise. However, it was no mystery to us that the true resistance would start only on the primordial Russian territory on the other side of the border of 1939. I hope that the field kitchen will nevertheless arrive, and we may be able to have a nap this night. June 23rd. Leaving Geist at 4.15 a.m. this morning, we moved along bad roads and we are now Demikova. The company has a pretty good deal of trouble. A lot of men are out of service, traumatizing their feet. I have brutal blisters on my feet, too, and now my butt's sweating from horseback riding as well. I wonder how it is at home these days. It's 10 a.m. June 24th. During the night, we moved in the direction of Kovno. Everywhere, there is chaotic shooting. This mob is broken and only resists with partisans and ambush fire. Even isolated soldiers suddenly open fire on the column. So we return the favor. In the morning, after a small rest, we moved through the scorching heat to Peskaliskis. There we had an afternoon rest. In the afternoon, we moved almost to Kovno. At 5 p.m., we found out that Kovno had been captured. The area is full of separated groups of Bolsheviks. We have to watch out. It's 11 p.m., and we're staying overnight in Ilka Kiemis. Are we staying here for long? Where do we go next? First things first, we need to get fed. Since yesterday, we've covered over 60 kilometers. June 25th. This morning at 4.45, I was awoken by our messenger, Russians. A group of 50 to 60 men tried to fight their way to their men. The battle lasted more than two hours and resulted in the total annihilation of the Reds. Forty-eight men were killed and nine were captured. There were five officers in the group, including one commissar. Eight machine guns were captured. They had only automatic rifles, assault rifles, and one light mortar. Among my guys, Reichelt was killed, and the wounded were Feldwebel Neumann got a bullet wound in the chest, and Gefreiter Zimmermann got three bullets in the leg and one tangential to the head. But worst of all, Gunter Wiebelitz, a good, honest guy, is no longer alive. He was caught by an anti-tank grenade when he rushed into an enemy position. His death was instantaneous. How awful. Now we are at Podrzezek village, and I have spent all this time writing a letter to Rakit's mother. These letters are always painful, 
as if you were leaving a piece of your heart in them. I don't know what the future holds for us now. For now, we're waiting for special orders. I think we'll move across Mammal near Kovno. As a matter of fact, the Reds poisoned all the wells and water pipes in Kovno. Our commander Engler was also wounded this morning. Eric Bolta will probably take over his company. That means I'll be missing one of my platoon commanders. June 26th. Today we reached the fortress of Kovno on Glacis No. 68. This morning we crossed the Nyman, called Memel in German, by the platoon bridge between Forts 4 and 5. It is now 8 p.m. We set up a midday rest in the eastern part of Kovno. Now our mission is to carry out special orders of the division. Three divisions of the Reds are surrounded in a large wooded area right in the direction of our advance. Below I will record some news that was brought to us today by Major Engel, who dropped by our regiment for a short time on the way. Today, on July 24th, it is already evident that there was a lot of extra things added to Engel's words at that time. What a bunch of officers! Leningrad is probably occupied. Dinaberg is occupied, as well as Kharkov and Vilna. The northern group of Russians is completely surrounded. 2,500 planes and 1,000 tanks have been destroyed. The Russian government is unaware of the situation of its forces, so there are no statements. There is still battles going on all around because the Red troops have no idea what to do. Our march through Kovno was great. The spirit was superb. The company was singing. Major Aberauer got the Iron Cross, as did Gefreiter Strauch from my company. The first one in the battalion, by the way. On the night march, there were skirmishes again. The lovely nation during the years of appropriate upbringing has become completely furious and somehow is convinced that we shoot every prisoner. The Red Army makes an impression that they have feet of clay. The single soldiers are brave, but they're useless. So far, we are opposed mainly by Asians. Eric Bolta took command of the 7th Company. Well, the company guard is set up, now we fill our kettles, and then go to sleep. For how long is this thing going to last? No one knows. I hope this night will be without another cowardly raid. The company received the letters again today. June 27th. We organized very efficiently in the morning. At night, we actually had to fight off an attack. The darkness was total. We beat them back. The Reds lost several men killed. I ordered to take up the defenses. Guarding the troops in a halt is bloody important in this war, wherever you are. The Reds' habitats haven't changed in the last 20 years. In Russia, we come across many villages with not a soul in them anymore. There are only piles of corpses and mutilated and wounded Lithuanians everywhere. Now and then, we see horrible, appalling scenes. Our soldiers are merciless in their rage, and bad luck to any Red who tries to ambush us. We moved in the scorching heat through difficult wooded terrain with weapons on our backs. I found a wagon to carry only heavy ammunition. Finally, we reached our route of advance. On the right and left, there was a dense forest for 30 kilometers. The road? The route? What a laugh! It's some kind of path in the forest. We take a round defense in this primeval forest. The mosquitoes are bothering us like hell. It's hard. There's no water for washing. Well, this night too will pass. There was post again today. June 29th. Yesterday was difficult, not a single minute of rest. Our regiment was in the center of the attacking division. There was no enemy in front of us, so we quickly crossed the Lomiana. It was almost a dash. The roads were awful, and my soldiers got a good deal of trouble on them. After a brief rest, we moved towards the Valija. We crossed at Gagujin using Russian pontoons. We carried our weapons and everything on our backs. The Reds abandoned it all in utter chaos. Their motorized division tried to cross the river here and was destroyed by dive bombers. It's a scary sight. The tanks, heavy motorized artillery, large tractors, everything is abandoned and burned. There are dead bodies everywhere. It's nauseating to look at. The Reds scattered in panic. We took the defense to guard the bridgehead at the bridge. The second battalion is on our left. The third is on our right. We got lost in the forest in darkness. The Russian maps had nothing to do with the terrain. We reached the designated location only by midnight. We had no time to entrench, but at 4 a.m. we were ordered to move on. With weapons on our backs, we had to reach the next river, which was almost 18 kilometers away. It was the Cerventa. There was a light rain, but after the heat and never-ending dust of the recent days, it was even nice. Now we are setting up a guard to the east and southeast. Our wagons should still be coming up. I expect a little pause, for the soldiers are exhausted. We managed to wash and shave today for the first time in three days. I wish the families could have seen us so muddy and unshaven. 
Yesterday, it happened again. A Russian who pretended to be dead cunningly shot a soldier from the 1st Battalion at point-blank range. This afternoon, we expect an urgent statement of the first generalized report of the Wehrmacht High Command on the course of the campaign in Russia. Everyone is excited. I suppose that many people around the world have eyes popping out of their heads in surprise. June 30th. It is now 6 a.m. The halt yesterday was broken by a hurried march. As soon as our wagons approached, we had to move out of position. We advanced about 17 kilometers. All was quiet and peaceful. There were no Russians, only their abandoned weapons and equipment. My company was at the head of the battalion. All were singing and chatting. It was the fulfillment of a soldier's dream of marching to Russia. At 10 p.m., we encamped for the night in the town of Xiaolai. I settled down in a small bed. The company spent the night in the tents. The night was quiet except for a short but strong thunderstorm. Today we march another 40 kilometers in the general direction of the northeast. We are probably heading for Dinaburg. July 1st, 1941. Yesterday we covered 36 kilometers. Our advance was cut off. We were seriously slowed down by a crossing of some river. We encamped in Picunyutse. I spent the night in a tent. It was very uncomfortable. It would be nice to nap a little longer. The conditions of the soldier's uniform is terrible. The body, in fact, is not in order either, especially the feet. During the move, there was nothing noteworthy, except that a Lithuanian woman who was a teacher told us that the Russian soldiers she saw fleeing before we arrived were unarmed and told her that they were heading home to make a revolution. Together we can cope. Well, by doing so, they will help to end this war, which so far, and I hope it will go on like this, consists for us of only marches. July 2nd. Yesterday, there was an almost 30-kilometer march in the terrible heat. We halted in the afternoon to take a break for three hours in one of the villages. The roads are very poor. They are even worse than before. In the evening, not long before our arrival, at the overnight stay in Majikiai, it rained. I spent the night on dry straw in an open shed. In the morning, I suffered severe kidney pains. For today, and it's now 4 p.m., and we are on the road since 8 a.m., we have covered, may you believe it or not, as much as six kilometers. The rain, which had been falling since the nighttime, had just stopped. The roads turned into a mess of knee-deep mud. The soldiers had to drag even four-horse wagons out of the mud. They even had to push the wagons down the hill. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and support the channel by subscribing. Goodbye, and see you all again.